So uh, now I will talk after having discussed uh, the weak law of large numbers, uh, we will talk about uh, strong law of large numbers and I um, will first just state the theorem. So, the theorem simply says that if x 1, x 2, x n is a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variables, each having a finite mean mu equal to expected x i. Uh, then with probability 1, see this is the important thing. Now, we are saying that with probability 1, uh, this average of these sample values x 1 plus x 2 plus x n upon n will converge to mu as n goes to infinity. So, that means, this is a sure event. So, therefore, you can immediately see the difference between uh, the law weak law of large numbers. There, it said that the probability that in probability x bar converges to or x bar n converges to mu. Here, we are saying that with probability 1, x bar n will converge to mu. So, that means, this is a sure event. Uh, provided the expectation of each of the x i's is finite. Okay. Uh, so, before we start uh, proving the theorem, let us just uh, interpret uh, what does it mean. And so, what we are saying is that, um, if you, if you uh, conduct a sequence of independent trials of some ex experiment uh, E, some experiment, uh, suppose you conduct um, independent trials of an experiment. If say for example, test tossing two coins. Uh, so, you go on doing that and then E is a fixed event of the experiment. So, you decide that um, you just decide on one of the events that will occur uh, when you are conducting this experiment. Say for example, you are tossing two coins and you want uh, uh, you want uh, two heads to appear three times see uh, you know uh, one after another. Suppose, E is that event. So, you go on tossing the coin uh, uh, the two coins and uh, you uh, do the experiment till uh, your okay. in this case I am talking of the occurrence of this thing. So, maybe we can say that uh, I toss I toss two coins uh, 10 times and then I want to uh, see how many times I get two heads that means both the coins show uh, head. So, that would be my event E for example. So, E is a fixed event of the experiment. Then uh, and let P E denote the probability of the occurrence of E on a particular trial. So, this is uh, probability of occurrence of E on a particular trial. Right. Now, um, define x i as 1 if E occurs on the ith trial. So, I am defining an indicator variable um, just to show you that how we can interpret uh, this uh, strong law of, law of large numbers. So, it says that if x i is 1, if e occurs on the i th trial and 0 if e does not occur on the i th trial. Okay. So, um, this will be the indicator variable of the event e. That means, if uh, e occurs on the i th trial, we will uh, say x i takes the value 1, otherwise x i takes the value 0. Right. So, then um, what the strong law of large numbers is saying that see this sequence uh, the, uh, x 1 plus x 2 plus x n upon n, this is converging to mu as n goes to infinity with probability 1. So, that means, and what does this uh, count x 1 plus x 2 plus x n, x 1 plus x 2 plus x n is the number of occurrences of E in the first n trials. Right because um, x i is 1 if e occurs in the i th trial. So, when you um, add up x 1 plus x 2 plus x n, that will be the total number of times e has occurred when you have conducted the uh, first n trials. You just started and then you started counting, you started your trials and then you started to count the number of times e occurs and that is given by x 1 plus x 2 plus x n. Right. So, uh, number of and um, strong law of large numbers is saying that this this uh, this ratio that means the number of times e has occurred divided by the total number of trials that will converge to your expected value of uh, expected value of x i which is equal to p e right so this we, we are denoting the probability of uh, the occurrence of e by uh, p e so this is uh, uh, this is the probability of e right um, I mean, I have denoted P e by the probability of occurrence of e. And so, uh, 
this ratio will converge to E x i, uh, which is the uh, probability of E, right. And this is with uh, probability 1. So, this is a certain event, right. So, this is interesting uh, uh, interpretation and therefore, this uh, the uh, strong law of large numbers reinforces our uh, concept of the way we had defined probability through relative frequency, okay, through the. Uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, let us, uh, let us uh, prove the result. So, we have assumed that expectation of x i minus mu raise to 4 is equal to k is less than infinity. So, we are assuming at the fourth moment about the mean is finite and then we show that. Uh, so, let uh, let us define s n as sigma i varying from 1 to n x i minus mu, then we want to compute expectation of s n 4 right, which would means that sigma x i minus mu, this whole thing i varying from 1 to n, this whole thing raised to 4, expectation of this. So, now, if you um, uh, expand this, so I should have a mu this bar here also, summation. So, this should be uh, uh, sigma x i minus mu, I am writing sigma this. So, therefore, this whole thing is 4. So, this should be this, right, and then this whole thing is raised to 4. So, sigma x i minus mu i varying from 1 to n, and I am saying s n 4. So, this whole thing raised to 4, and then this expectation. So, when you are x now taking the fourth power sigma x i minus mu raised to this whole thing raised to 4. So, therefore, I am now expanding this by the binomial theorem. So, this will be summation i varying from 1 to n x i minus mu raise to 4, right. So, uh, this is your uh, up to n terms. So, each raise to fourth power, then you will take 2 at a time product of 2 at a time. So, this will be 4 times sigma i j varying from 1 to n x i minus mu cube into x j minus mu, where i is different from j, right. And similarly, uh, then you will again take 2 at a time i and j, and this will be 6 times x i minus mu whole square into x j minus mu whole square summation i j from 1 to n i again not equal to j. Then you will take 3 terms at a time, so i j k, and that will be plus 4 times summation i j k all varying from 1 to n, but i is not equal to j is not equal to k. So, all 3 indices have to be different, and this will be x i minus mu whole square into x j minus mu into x k minus mu. And finally, product of 4 terms, uh, where again i j k l are all different. Oh, I should have said here, i not equal to j not equal to k not equal to l. Right, and this is also varying from 1 to n. Right, so this is x i minus mu into x j minus mu into x k minus mu into x l minus mu. So this is the expansion of uh, e s n raised to 4, and so the expectation is all outside. So this is the big bracket and the expectation of this. Now of course expectation can go inside; it's a linear uh, function. So uh, in the sense that, uh, yes. So, uh, expectation can be taken inside. Then, I have assumed independence of the random variables x 1, x 2, x n. So, then um, expectation of the product is product of two random variables is the product of the expectations. So, E can also go inside here now, inside the summation sign. And uh, since uh, expectation of x i minus mu is 0 for all i. So, you see that uh, the expectation of this will be 0, and similarly uh, this will not be 0, but here again you have uh, linear terms. So, expectation of this and expectation of this will also be 0, and here of course, expect all the four expectations will be 0, because these are independent. So, this will be summation expectation of x i minus mu into expectation of x j minus mu and so on. So, uh, so these terms will disappear. So, you will only be left with sigma i varying from 1 to n x i minus mu raise to 4, and uh, then 6 times summation i j varying from 1 to n i not equal to j x i minus mu whole square and x j minus mu whole square. Now, we have already assumed that this is uh, equal to k and this is uh, less than infinity. So, here you have n such terms, In again independence tells you that you can just add up uh, these uh, 
numbers, the, k, uh, this, uh, you can add up uh, k n times. So, this will be n k and then here um, you are saying i is not equal to j. So, uh, the, uh, the choices you can have is n into n minus 1 by 2. So, this many pairs you can have so i, I j, so that i is not equal to j. So, therefore, um, uh, this will be n into n minus 1 by 2. So, that cancels out with 6. So, there will be 3. 3 times this is what you will get. What we are saying is that, since variance of uh, x i minus mu whole square, uh, because I am assuming that uh, this is always non-negative. So, this is equal to expectation of x i minus mu raised to 4. Right. If I you write the expression for this, this is the fourth moment expectation of uh, the fourth moment about mu minus expectation of um, x i minus mu whole square. Now, this variance of x i minus mu whole square. So, that will be uh, expectation of the uh, square square of this. So, that is raised to 4 minus expectation of x i minus mu whole square, then whole square. Right. Uh, this of course, is your uh, variance of x i. So, anyway. So, then um, since this is non negative, therefore, this from here it follows that your expectation of x i minus mu square whole square is less than or equal to expectation of x i minus mu raised to 4, which we are taking to be k. So, therefore, this is also finite. right? So, therefore, um, everything is finite here. right? Uh, these things are also finite, because the square is finite. So, therefore, both of these are finite. So, therefore, um, uh, expectation of S n 4 is less than or equal to, if you want to write n k plus 3 n into n minus 1 into k, because each of them is less than or equal to root k. So, that becomes k here. right? And therefore, um, uh, when you divide the whole thing, uh, both the sides by n raised to 4, expectation of S n 4 divided by n 4. So, this becomes k by n cube 3 k upon n square into 1 minus 1 by n. So, this you can neglect for large values of n, this will become 1. right? Now, um, since uh, 1 upon n cube, sigma 1 upon n cube and sigma 1 upon n 4 are both convergent series, right? remember, because sigma remember 1 by n cube and sigma 1 by n 4. So, n goes to infinity 1 to infinity, these are convergent. So, now I can uh, take the uh, that means, when I uh, take the summation here, this is uh, a convergent series, because uh, uh, both these series are convergent. And so, uh, I write expectation of sigma n varying from 1 to infinity S n 4 upon n 4 is equal to this, because since this is a convergent series, I can take expectation inside. And so, uh, uh, I get this here, right. And uh, yes, okay. So, see this is uh, what we have shown is that this is finite right? expectation of S n 4 upon n raise to 4 summation and varying from 1 to infinity. This is a finite series. So, therefore, with probability 1, uh, the summation n raise to 1 to infinity S n 4 upon n 4 should be less than infinity. I mean see uh, actually we have shown that each of this is, uh, because each of this is um, k upon n cube plus 3 k by n square into 1 minus 1 by n. So, therefore, uh, this summation, when I take the summation here, sigma 1 by n cube and sigma 1 by n square, they are both convergent. So, therefore, uh, this is a convergent series, but uh, because this is a, uh, we can take E outside, right, because of linearity. So, then this is uh, finite expectation of sigma n varying from 1 to infinity S n 4 upon n raise to 4 is uh, finite. And so, we are saying that the inside thing, uh, the this expression or this series must be finite, because if there is some positive probability that the sum is not finite, if this sum is not finite, then its expectation will not be finite. And we have shown that the expectation is less than uh, sigma expectation uh, this, uh, this thing and therefore, that thing is uh, finite. So, uh, this must be finite, because if there was any positive probability that this is not finite, then the expectation would not be finite. So, therefore, I am saying with probability 1. So, this is the main point. I right? will repeat the argument that we have said that this is a finite series, but this I can rewrite as expectation this. right? And why we are saying this? Because this whole thing is finite, because if this was not finite, then expectation would not be finite, but here we have uh, this is this whole thing is finite. So, 
this is equal to this and this is finite. So, therefore, uh, sigma n varying from 1 to infinity s n 4 upon n raised to 4 is finite. And um, if a series infinite series uh, has a finite sum, it is a convergent uh, series, then the nth term must go to 0. Otherwise, again from your uh, convergence of series, you know that uh, this is a necessary condition that the uh, nth term must go to 0, if the series is convergent. So, therefore, um, uh, sigma s n 4 upon n 4 and varying from 1 to infinity less than infinity implies that the nth term must go to 0 as n goes to infinity. And if the um, now this if this goes to 0, then the fourth power 1, one fourth uh, one fourth root of this will also go to 0. So, therefore, limit s n upon n as n goes to infinity is 0. right? And uh, so, um, just replacing the value of s n here, this is sigma x i minus mu by n and varying from 1 to uh, i varying from sorry, i varying from 1 to n uh, uh, limit as n goes to infinity is 0. right? And so, you can just take summation inside here. So, sigma x i by n i varying from 1 to n limit n goes to infinity is mu. So, this is with probability 1. Okay. So, um, essentially um, here I just needed the uh, fact that uh, to prove this um, uh, strong law of large numbers. That means, first of all uh, let us just be clear. So, what we are saying is that this will happen with probability 1. So, that means, it is a sure event. And so, as n goes to uh, becomes larger and larger, what we are saying is that uh, this um, x n bar, your x n bar will converge to mu. So, it will get closer and closer to mu and this is a sure event, this is happening with probability 1. Uh, in the law of uh, weak law of large numbers, I we just simply said that the probability of x n bar minus mu, see this uh, value greater than delta probability of this could be shown to be less than epsilon and then of course, as n. So, therefore, this was only in terms of probability. Now, here we are show, saying that this is a sure event that x n bar must go to mu uh, as n goes to infinity. Okay. Now, the thing is that and of course, here I just needed the uh, fact that expectation of x i minus mu raised to 4, uh, this thing is uh, less than infinity. Right. So, uh, what I want to say is that if the kind of distribution that we have dis discussed in this course, all of them I could show you the existence of m g f. I, I have not taken uh, any distributions for which the m g f did not exist or for which the uh, mean and the variance did not exist. So, in fact, all the distribution that we have considered here. So, therefore, you can see that <coughs> for all of them, this condition will also be satisfied, because if the m g f exists, then the fourth moment will also be uh, finite. In fact, um, uh, the moment m g f you can, what we mean by m g f is that is the, when you expand it, you get uh, as different powers of the, the uh, power of t raised to n upon n factorial would give you the nth moment about the origin. So, if uh, that is finite, then you can say that this is also finite. right? And so, therefore, uh, uh, the strong law of large, large numbers also holds uh, for all these distributions. Uh, so, the weak law of large numbers and the strong law of large numbers both hold. And uh, so, essentially it is only when uh, you have situations where your, uh, 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 where your, uh, well actually, um, yeah, maybe I should not uh, really worry about that part, but uh, essentially the proof uh, has been, uh, the, this proof has been uh, given under the condition that expectation of x i minus mu raised to 4 is less than infinity. Okay. Fine, and that uh, th this is a sure event. That means, here um, this will converge the uh, x n bar will converge to mu as n goes to infinity with probability 1. Okay. Now, just want to uh, look at uh, Stirling's formula here and um, see all of you know that uh, n factorial can be approximated by under root of 2 pi n into n by e raised to n. So, uh, many times this is a very useful way of um, approximating the factorials right? and um, in many limiting uh, situations and so on we uh, it is very helpful to be able to uh, replace n factorial by this and then you can get 
uh, good results. So, uh, in other words what we are saying is that n factorial upon under root 2 pi n and by e raise to n goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. This is the idea right. Now, the solution uh, what we are doing here is we are saying that let x i uh, be Poisson 1 that means, the lambda is 1. So, mean uh, this thing uh, the uh, parameter for the Poisson distribution is 1. So, let me take x i this then uh, take n to be uh, sigma x i i varying from 1 to n. So, this will be Poisson n right and for Poisson n your variance um, that means, uh, uh, variance of n is also n remember for Poisson lambda uh, mean and variance are the same and they are both equal to the parameter lambda. Right. So, now if you want to estimate this probability n equal to n uh, this uh, using the central limit theorem using the central limit theorem I will say that uh, x uh, this can be approximated using the continuity factor uh, the x lies between n minus half and n plus half where x is your normal n n. Okay. So, applying the central limit theorem uh, I will approximate this probability by uh, saying that the corresponding uh, uh, normal. So, for large n we will say that uh, um, n behaves like a normal a variable with a mean n and variance n. right? So, this is uh, what you want to compute and uh, therefore, um, in terms of. Uh, so, when I want to write this probability. So, this one because x is normal I will write as 1 upon under root 2 pi n because the variance is n. So, uh, uh, standard deviation will be root n and this will be n minus half to n plus half of e minus x minus n whole square to n d x. So, this is my probability using because I have used the central limit approximation uh, fine. Now, just look at this integrand see what I am saying here is that x minus n whole square upon 2 n at the lower limit n minus half is n minus half minus n by 2 n whole square which is 1 by 4 into 2 n. So, this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and so, e raise to minus something going to 0 is 1 right. And similarly, uh, when you substitute uh, n plus half for x, then again uh, this will be 1 by 8 n right. So, uh, you see uh, the uh, in, in the limiting case as, as, as n becomes large, uh, the two limits come close right and the uh, value of the integrand is um, uh, close to 1. Right, because for n large this is always 1. So, therefore, you can always say that this integral is uh, you can multiply see the, you take the maximum value of the uh, integrand. So, which is 1 into the length of the inter interval which is also 1. So, this is this upon root 2 pi n. So, just apply this approximation because the, the uh, theorem from integral calculus. So, this integrand is uh, interval throughout and then you multiply that by the length of the interval. So, you get 1 upon under root 2 pi n right and so this probability uh, is approximated by 1 upon under root 2 pi n and uh, but uh, since this is we said this is Poisson uh, random variable because we started with the assumption that n is sigma x i. So, then uh, this probability in terms of Poisson probability can be written as e raise to minus n uh, n raise to n divided by n factorial. And so, from when you equate these two, then you get that n factorial. Uh, I mean, you equate this with this, and then approximate by one upon under root two pi n. So your n factorial is under root two pi n, n by e raised to n. So you know, see the interesting applications. I mean, I just came across that this application, and I thought I'll uh, discuss with you about the central limit theorem. So the strong law of large numbers uh, we have. Uh, sort of established, but as we saw that for us actually there will be no difference and we will continue to approximate mu by x n bar for reasonably large values of n. So, now I will want to talk about joint moment generating functions. We talked about the moment generating function for a single random variable and then we talked of you know uh, 
we could compute uh, for uh, independent random variables, when you talk of sum of independent random variables, like two random variables x and y are independent, then I could also uh, you know because of through independence, we could define the moment generating function of x plus y, because it was just the product of the moment generating function of x and y. But, uh, there should be a, a general definition of moment generating function of more than one variable, when the uh, when they are not independent. So, therefore, uh, just uh, completing this uh, uh, you know this part of the uh, <coughs> theory. So, what we are saying is, that, so the definition simply says that uh, if x 1, x 2, x n are, uh, are n random variables and uh, then the joint moment generating function of these. Uh, so, uh, I mean if they are these n random variables, so we are given the joint density function of the n random variables, then we can define the moment generating function of these n random variables as of course, uh, right now I am not. So, this is simply the expectation uh, that means, uh, so you now need uh, uh, n uh, real numbers t 1, t 2, t n. So, we will say that the moment generating function of x 1, x 2, x n is actually uh, and I will denote the uh, m g f by m of t 1, t 2, t n. This is expectation of e raise to t 1, x 1 plus t 2, x 2 up to t n, x n okay, for uh, all, t, all real numbers t 1, t 2, t n for which this expectation is defined. Okay. Um, and the individual m g f s can be obtained uh, from this by putting um, all but one of the t i is equal to 0 and then uh, getting the corresponding function from here, because then it will be uh, say for example, for the i th uh, the you want to compute the m g f of or obtain the m g f of the i th random variable here, then I will put all other t i is equal to 0. So, m of x i uh, at t would be e t x i right, expectation of e raise to t x i, which will be in terms of uh, the function. Uh, m here would be simply 0 0 and then t i you write as t and all other results 0. Okay. So, therefore, um, when you define the uh, joint uh, m g f, you can get the ind individual m g f also. And um, just as in uh, uh, one variable case, we had uh, we did not prove the result, but we uh, stated it and said that if the um, moment generating function uniquely defines your uh, distribution function also. So, once you have obtained the moment generating function of a random variable, then you know what its distribution function will also be and of course, it is unique. Right. So, here also um, in the joint case, we will again uh, just uh, assume this result that uh, the moment generating function uniquely defines the joint distribution of x 1, x 2, x n. Okay. So, um, yeah and now, um, uh, what we want to, uh, so it uniquely defines this and now under independence, uh, yeah. So, therefore, uh, if, if the, if the, uh, if the uh, joint density function is uniquely defined, then we can conclude, we can conclude that if the random variables x 1, x 2, x n are independent, then I mean this is the condition if and only if, if and only if. Uh, your m t 1 t 2 t n can be written as a product of individual uh, uh, this thing. So, here okay, if you want to write, you can do this also. In that means, you can decompose your joint moment generating function into the product of individual m g f. So, um, uh, I mean assuming that this, this result we have sort of accepted that uh, the m g f will define the distribution function uniquely. And so, now we can, uh, uh, yeah. so you want me to, sh uh, let us show the if and only if part. So, now if, um, if they are independent, then of course, the things follow immediately, because uh, you will write expectation of e t 1 x 1 plus t n x n and that will be and th this you can then write as product. And because x 1 x 2 x n are independent, the expectation I can take inside. And so, uh, this whole thing, this can be written as this. This is because x 1, x 2, x n are independent, right? product of the expectations. And so, it immediately follows that this is your um, m g f of x 1, this is m g f of x n. And so, you can write these. Now, the other way. Uh, okay. uh, now, let us show the converse. That is, now suppose one holds. 
So, we want to show that uh, this relationship uh, uh, will also, we can conclude from here that x 1, x 2, x n are uh, independent random variables. So, um, uh, we can see, uh, if you look at uh, the right hand side of 1. So, uh, this part, then this represents the m g f of n independent random variables, because it is the product of n uh, m g f's. So, therefore, and which we know, we, we have said that if uh, two random variables are uh, uh, independent, then the m g f of the two random variables will be the product of uh, individual random variables. So, just extending that rule, uh, this represents the product of um, uh, this represents the m g f of n independent random variables. Now, the i th of uh, this uh, random variable, uh, the i th term here m x i t i uh, of which has the same distribution as x i, right. Because, uh, so here uh, each one of them for example, m x 1 t 1. So, this is the moment generating function of x 1 and as we have been saying that uh, the uh, moment generating functions characterize the uh, p d f uniquely. So, therefore, uh, uh, each of the terms here, each of the m g f here uh, determine uniquely the corresponding uh, distribution uh, p d f or so, which is of the i th variable. right? So, just as for a single random variable, the m g f uniquely determines the distribution of the random variable, the joint m g f uniquely determines the joint distribution. So, therefore, from here we can say that uh, the uh, product of the. So, that means, the joint m g f this will give me, because this is the joint m g f of x 1, x 2, x n. So, this will determine the joint p d f of x 1, x 2, x n, but then that is we have shown is the product of uh, the individual p d f s and this is how we have defined independence of the random variables x 1, x 2, x n. That is, if the joint p d f which I have written down here. So, the right hand side of 1 represents a distribution, which is the product of individual distributions of x i s and therefore, um, this is the and so here and therefore, you can expression wise also write that uh, m of t 1 t 2 t n is equal to this expectation of t 1 x 1 plus t 2 x 2 plus t n x n into f x 1 f x 2 f x n. That means, the joint density function of x 1 x 2 x n uh, joint p d f is uh, the product of individual p d f s. So, this is what we are concluding, we can immediately conclude from here, right, because uh, the m g f s uniquely characterize your p d f s. So, therefore, um, just using that fact, I can uh, conclude that the joint p d f is this and uh, therefore, x 1, x 2, x n are independent random variables. So, a neat proof of the uh, fact that if uh, you can write the joint moment generating function as a product of individual uh, this thing, then it implies that the random variables are independent and if they are independent, then you can also write the m g f joint m d f m g f as the product of individual m g f s. So, it, we have been using some of these results, but now I have sort of given you a theoretical, uh, I have supported it by theory. See, in this example, um, uh, I am just trying to demonstrate uh, the use of um, you know uh, M, uh, joint m g f. Uh, so, uh, even though you know x and y are uh, independent random uh, normal uh, random variables, each with mean mu and variance sigma square. So, if you start with that, then uh, we have already shown that uh, you know by using the method of transformation that x plus y and x minus y uh, are also independent uh, random variables and in fact, they are normal random variables. But now, I you want to use the method of um, m g f to show that x plus y and x minus y are independent and then of course, uh, once we have shown uh, once we obtain the uh, individual m g f s. Then, as I as I have been saying that once you know the m g f, you can also determine the uh, distribution function or the density function of the random variable. So, we will do that. So, just as an illustration of what we have just discussed, I want to go through this example. So, um, since x and y are independent and they are uh, normal uh, independent random variables and they are both mu and sigma square. right? So, therefore, x plus y will be normal to mu and then variance will be get added, because they are independent. So, 2 sigma square and for x minus y the mean will be 0 and the variance will be again 2 sigma square. So, um, therefore, um, if you want to write 
um, m g f of x plus y, because it is normal with mean 2 mu and variance 2 sigma square. Therefore, it will be two e raised to 2 mu s plus half into 2 sigma square s square. Right? This is and similarly, m g f of um, x minus y will be, because the mu is 0, uh, the mean of this is 0. So, it will be e half into 2 sigma square into t square. This is simply t square. Right? Now, uh, by our formula, we will write the joint m g f of x plus y and x minus y. So, this will be uh, expectation of e raise to s times x plus y plus t times x minus y for s and t real numbers, right. Uh, s and t belonging to r, right, which um, uh, I can uh, write. So, I, why am I rewriting this? Ah, right. So, now I collect the x terms and the y terms. So, this is s plus t is the coefficient of x and s minus t is the coefficient of y. So, this is what you have. Right. Now, we will use the uh, independence of x and y, because this is simply um, some s plus t times x, which can be your t 1 and s minus t, which can be your t 2. So, this is e raise to t 1 x plus t 2 y, but x and y are uh, independent random variables. So, therefore, I can um, uh, decompose this m g f into the individual m g f. So, this will become expectation of e raise to s plus t into x into expectation of e raise to s minus t y. Right. So, he, now I can use the independence of x and y, because this is written as this way. And so, s plus t can be treated as another real number and s minus t can be treated as uh, a different real number. Right. Um, and so, uh, because of independence of x and y, I can decompose into this. Right. Now, let me write the um, uh, m g f of, because x is again normal with mean uh, sigma and uh, variance sigma square, and this also is a mean uh, mu and sigma uh, is the variance. So, therefore, when I write the m g f s plus t e raise to s plus t into mu plus half s plus t whole square sigma square, and the other one will be e raise to s minus t mu plus half. Um, s minus t whole square into sigma square. right? And then, you see we just uh, uh, rearrange the terms, simplify the expression. So, s plus t into mu and s minus t into mu will become 2 s mu. right? And here the product terms will cancel out the 2 s t here and the minus 2 s t will cancel out and it will be e raise to half into 2 sigma square s square plus t square. right? So, now again um, I collect the uh, s terms. So, this is e raise to 2 s mu plus half into 2 sigma square s square and this is e half 2 sigma square t square. And um, this is what exactly see this is the m g f of x plus y, because this is <coughs> and that is what I am saying. That So, this is m g f of x plus y, because this is 2 mu and 2 sigma square. Um, and you know, we can also say that these are x plus y is normally distributed with mean 2 mu and 2 sigma square, and this is the m g f of x minus y. So, there you see that mu is 0 and uh, the variance is 2 sigma square. Right. And so, since uh, from, from the theorem that I had uh, just stated and proved to you, uh, this uh, says that if your joint m g f can be written as the product of the individual m g f, then the variables must be uh, must be uh, independent. Right? And so, we conclude that x plus y and x minus y are independent and also we can conclude that um, x plus y is normal 2 mu 2 sigma square and uh, x minus y uh, <coughs> x minus y is uh, is normal uh, 0 to sigma square so um, uh, you know with a series through a series of examples i'll try to revisit the results which we have already um, uh, we'll, i'll try to revisit the results uh, which we have already you know obtained other way by you know especially i'll apply this the concept of joint mgf uh, to uh, sums of uh, random variables 
and uh, then try to show you that sometimes uh, this method uh, is easier and can get the, get the results faster. So, it depends, it depends on the situation and of course, a lot of experience, but uh, so this is also another important tool and I thought that uh, in this course, we must uh, uh, define this and you know give you the results, so that you can uh, uh, sometimes when uh, other methods do not work, this will uh, come to be prove to be uh, quite handy. Okay.